That ends Prime Minister's questions. For those who wish to leave. <laughs> We now, can I, can I just say to the House, I expect moderate and temperate language. Yes. As we come to the statement, Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, with, with permission, I will make a statement. I'm grateful to Sue Gray for her reports today, and I want to thank her for the work that she's done. I also thank the Metropolitan Police for completing their investigation. And I want to begin today by renewing my apology to the House, uh, to the whole country, for the short lunchtime gathering on the 19th of June 2020 in the Cabinet Room, uh, during which I stood at my place at the Cabinet table and for which I received a fixed penalty notice. And I also want to say, Mr Speaker, above all, that I take full responsibility for everything that took place on my watch. Sue Gray's report has emphasised that it is up to the political leadership in number 10 to take ultimate responsibility, and of course I do. But since these investigations have now come to an end, this is my first opportunity to set out some of the context and to explain both my understanding of what happened and also to explain what I have previously said uh, to this House. And it's, it's important to set out uh, that over a period of about 600 days, gatherings on a total of eight dates have been found to be in breach of the regulations in a building that is 5,300 metres square across five floors, excluding the flats. Mr Speaker, I, I do think it is, impossible, it is important because this is the first time I've had, the chance I've had to set out the context. Hundreds of staff are entitled to work. And in the Cabinet Office, uh, which has thousands of officials and now is the biggest it's been in any point in its 100-year history. And that is in itself one of the reasons why the Government is look now looking for change and reform. <laughs> Mr Speaker, those staff working in Downing Street were permitted to continue attending their office for the purpose of work, and the exemption under the regulations applied to their work because of the nature of their jobs reporting directly to the Prime Minister. These people were working extremely long hours, doing their best to give this country the ability to fight the pandemic. During, Mr. Speaker, I appreciate that this is no uh, mitigation, but it is important to set Prime out. Prime Minister, the please, just, just one second. Can I just appeal to the House? I expect it to be heard, and I want everybody to hear it. And I want the same respect to be shown to the Leader of the Opposition afterwards. So, please, this is a very, very important statement that the country wants to hear as well. Prime Minister. Yeah. Mr Speaker, I'm trying to set out the context not to, uh, not to, to, to mitigate or uh, to absolve myself in any way. Uh, the exemption under which they were present uh, in Downing Street uh, includes those circumstances where officials and advisers were leaving the government. And uh, it was uh, appropriate to recognise them, to thank them for the work that they had done. Let me, let me come to that, Mr Speaker. I briefly attended such gatherings to thank them for their service, which I believe is one of the essential duties of leadership and particularly important, and particularly important when people need to feel that their contributions have been appreciated and to keep morale as high as possible. I'm trying to explain the reasons I was there, Mr Speaker. And it's clear from what uh, Sue Gray has had to say that some of these gatherings then went on far longer than was necessary. And they were clearly in breach of the rules and they fell foul of the rules. I have to tell the House, because the House will need to, to know this, and again this is not to mitigate or to extenuate, I had no knowledge of those subsequent proceedings because I simply wasn't there. And I have been as surprised and disappointed as anyone else in this House as the revelations have unfolded, and frankly, Mr. Speaker, I have been appalled by some of the behaviour, particularly in the treatment of the security and the cleaning staff. And I would like to apologise to those members of staff. And I expect anyone who behaved in that way to apologise to them as well. And 
I am happy to set on the record now that when I said and I came to this House and said in all sincerity that the rules and guidance had been followed uh, at all times, it was what I believed to be true. It was certainly the case when I was present at gatherings to wish staff farewell, and the House will note that my attendance at these moments, brief as it was, has not been found to be outside the rules. But clearly this was not the case for some of those gatherings after I had left and at other gatherings when I was not even in the building. So I would like to correct, I would like to correct the record uh, to take this opportunity, not in any sense to absolve myself of responsibility, which I take and have always taken, but simply, simply to explain why I spoke as I did in this House. Mr Speaker, in response to her interim report, Sue Gray acknowledges that very significant changes have already been enacted. She writes, and I quote, I am pleased that progress is being made in addressing the issues I raised. And she adds, since my update, there have been changes to the organisation and management of Downing Street in the Cabinet Office with the aim of creating clearer lines of leadership and accountability, and now these need the chance and time to bed in. Number 10 now has its own permanent secretary charged with applying the highest standards of governance. There are now easier ways for staff to voice any worries, and Sue welcomes that, Sue Gray welcomes that, and I quote, steps have since been taken to introduce more easily accessible means by which to raise concerns electronically, in person or online, including directly with the permanent secretary. The entire senior management has changed. There is a new, there is a new, there is a new chief of staff, an elected member of this House, who also commands the status of a cabinet minister. There is a new director of communications, a new principal private secretary, and another of other key appointments in my office. I am confident with the changes and new structures that are now in place, that we are humbled by the experience and we have learned our lesson. And I want to conclude by saying that I, Mr Speaker, I, I am humbled and I have learned a, a lesson, Mr Speaker. And I, want to, and I want to conclude by saying that whatever the failings, whatever the failings of of, yeah, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. And whatever the failings of Number 10 and the Cabinet Office throughout this very difficult period, for which, and my own, for which I take full responsibility, I continue to believe that the civil servants and advisers in question, hundreds of them, thousands of them, some of whom, Mr. Speaker, are the very people who've received fines, are good, hard working people, motivated motivated by the highest calling to do the very best for our country. And I will always be proud of what they achieved, including procuring essential life-saving PPE, creating the biggest testing programme in Europe, and helping to enable the development and distribution of the vaccine which got this country through the worst pandemic of a century. And now, Mr Speaker, we must get our country through the aftershocks of COVID with every ounce of ingenuity and compassion and, and hard work. So I hope that today, as well as learning the lessons from the, Sue Gray's report, which I'm glad I commissioned, and uh, I, again, I repeat my, I'm, I'm grateful to her. I, will, I, I, I hope very much that now that she has reported, we will be able to move on and focus on the, on the priorities of the British people, standing firm against Russian aggression, easing the hardship caused by the rising costs that people are facing, fulfilling our pledges to generate a high-wage, high-skill, high-employment economy that will unite and level up across the whole of our United Kingdom. That is my mission. That is our mission. That is the mission of the whole of the Government, and we will work day and night to deliver it, and I commend this statement to the House.